In this video, we'll explore three essential CSS units, pixels, rams, and m, focusing on when and how to best apply them. But instead of just saying use pixels here, rams there, and m's in another place, my goal for this video is to clarify how those units operate so you can make informed decisions in your projects. And I also share a quick tip on how to make calculations uh, for rams easy so you don't lose focus on writing styles. Let's start with pixels because pixels are simple. Pixel is basically just a tiny light bulb on your screen that changes color. And if you set the width of an element to let's say 300 pixels, that's exactly what it appears on the screen. It takes the width of 300 those micro light bulbs. Well, that was mostly the case until around 2010 before iPhone 4 got released. iPhone 4 introduced retina display, Apple's term for high DPI display or high dots per inch display. They were not the first company to create those type of displays, but they definitely brought this concept into the mainstream. So what exactly changed? The predecessor of iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, had the screen size of 320 pixels by 480, and iPhone 4 doubled that to 640 to 960 pixels. But despite the increase in screen resolution, the physical size of the screen stayed the same. It was 3.5 inches. If web browsers kept using the same logic where the box that has, let's say, width of 300 pixels took exactly 300 device pixels on the screen, everything on iPhone 4 would be very small. This moment marked a big change in how we understand pixels in web design. Suddenly, we have two types of pixels, CSS pixel and device pixels. So, for example, on iPhone 4, one CSS pixel equals to four device pixels. It's not always a simple one to four ratio because there are different types of displays with different types of pixel densities now. The key takeaway here is that one pixel in CSS is no longer a fixed value that represent one pixel on the screen. When you set a value in pixels in CSS today, let's say 16 pixels, it's like saying, what would 16 pixels look on a screen a pre iPhone 4 era? On top of that, browsers have a zoom feature where you can zoom in and out of the page and if you set the value to let's say 300 pixels and then zoom in on retina display it's definitely not 300 pixels but it still sort of works right we can still set values in pixels understanding that those are CSS pixels, zoom feature work, so we're fine, right? Not quite, because one of the most important accessibility requirements is the ability not to just zoom the page in and out, but also change the default font size. And you might be saying, I, I don't do that on, like, on my computer, but you'd be surprised to know that a lot of people do, and a lot of people rely on that feature. And if we're using pixels, we are missing out on the opportunity to support it and make our web Websites accessible. So consider this example. I have a demo here with just a single paragraph with the class pixels, and this paragraph has a font size of 32 pixels. Now, if I open this page in the browser and also open the browser settings and start changing the font size here from, let's say, medium, which is a default setting, to very small, to small, to large to very large, you'll notice that nothing here changes. The paragraph stays the same. The font size doesn't change at all. So that's why setting font sizes with relative units like rems makes way more sense. Rem stands for root M and it relates to the font size of the root element or HTML element. And it became an industry standard that the root font size is 16 pixels. And you don't have to redeclare it. So in our styles here, you don't have to do something like this that's already there. So let me just delete it. With that understanding in mind that root font size is 16 pixels, one rem is also 16 pixels. So let me duplicate this paragraph, give it another class, I'll call it rems, and duplicate this here as well. And instead of using pixels here, I'm gonna use RAM. So if I want to have the same font size, 32 pixels, I divide 32 by 16 and I'll get two RAM. And you can see that the font size actually changed even though by default two RAM equals to 32. And that's because I left the settings in the browser at large or extra large, I don't remember. Okay, yeah, I left them at very large. So let's refresh the page here and change it to medium. 
Now you can see that the font size of the first paragraph and the font size of the second paragraph are the same. But if I change the system font size here from very small to small to large, the font size of the second paragraph changes. And that's why it's very important to set the font sizes in your projects to relative units to make sure that we are creating accessible websites that support this important feature. And this is pretty much the main rule or intuition that I follow when I need to decide whether to use pixels versus rem. If I want the font size or another dimension like width or height or anything change, if the user changes the default font size of the browser, I pick rems. If I want it to stay the same, I pick pixels. But at this point, it looks like basically we just need to pick rems for everything, right? Because if we want to make websites accessible, that's what we do. Not quite let me show you another example. So let me change it back to default and go back to CodePen. Now let's duplicate this paragraph here and give it a class rams pixels and, and create another rule in CSS. I'll keep the font size at 2 rem, but I will add a border which would be 4 pixels here. A 4 would be 0.25. and a padding. And I'll keep padding at the same value, 2rem. And for this element, I will set the border to the same pixel value, but I'll actually use pixels. So I'll set four pixels, solid, black. And for padding, I'll set 32 pixels. Now let's save it. Both paragraphs look identical here, but let's go back to the browser and start changing the font size. So I'll change it from medium to very small. And you'll notice that the first paragraph that uses rem values for border and padding now has less padding and the border is less thick. While the second paragraph didn't change in terms of the size of the padding and the thickness of the border. If I change it to very large, it will maintain the same behavior. The thickness of the border and the padding stays the same. Now, which of these two behaviors is better depends on the design you have and depends on your particular project. But understanding how these values behave when user changes the font size will help you decide whether to use pixels or rems. So as you can see, rem units are awesome. They help us build websites that support default font size of the browser change and help us make websites accessible. But there is one very annoying thing about them, and that is calculations. We have to always keep 16 in our head to uh, calculate rem units properly. I get asked sometimes like, do you like calculate it in your head? No, because I'm, I'm really bad at math. What I usually do when I need to calculate the unit, I use Spotlight Search. So for example, let's say I need to calculate what's the RAM value for a 34 pixels, because it's like not as easy to, to calculate as 32. In that case, I would press a control space and I think I remapped it to control space. So I type in 34 divided by 16, immediately press control C and the value is already in my clipboard. So I can go in here and say, instead of font size two RAM, I press Control v, Command V and we have 34. And there you go. You're still in the flow state. You're still writing styles. You didn't open an extra app. It's just a, like a quick shortcut. Now, I don't really like magic numbers in my style, so I would probably not keep it like this in production. So another practice that I also follow is I usually create variables for font sizes and do the calculation once and then reuse those variables. So on practice, it would look something like this. I would have variable for font size 16 and I would set it to one rem. And here's another tip. If you have copilot access, it will actually help you calculate the values for the variables as you type them. So if I want to create a variable for um, 18, for example, I would start typing and it already suggests 14 for me, but that's not what I want. So I can use 18 and it suggests the value to me. I just press tab, no calculation done. I press enter. It suggests 20. If that's what I want, I'll just, I just press tab. If I want something else, let's say here, I don't want 24. So I just accept it till this point and type in 32 and it gives me the value. Now we move forward 48. 
see we can just keep going just pressing tab adjusting the values and we're still in the flow state we're still mentally with the styles and not doing any calculations and then later in, in your styles instead of using magic numbers we can use these variables there is also another technique that makes calculations easier and that is setting the root font size to 62.5 percent if we do that like so one rem becomes 10 pixels. So here, for example, font size two rem would be font size 20 pixels or border 0 0.25 would be 2.5 pixels. I do not recommend this approach because there is general agreement that root font size is 16 pixels and setting the root font size to something else may actually break the compatibility of your project with other third party projects. So imagine if you need to use a third party package in your project, like a carousel, or a dialogue or something else that has styles built in and those styles rely on rem units with an assumption that one rem is 16 pixels but we've changed that and that means that the styles of that package will either break or everything will look much smaller than intended and it's really not that straightforward to untangle later because let's say you start using 10 pixels as the root font size and you start creating components with that assumption and you have all kinds of values like this one 2.125 2 RAM and then 3 RAM, 3.5 RAM and all kinds of values. And then later you need to use that third party package and the root font size doesn't match. So how do you change it? Do you update the styles of the third party package or do you refactor your project? Usually it's especially if the project is big, like what would you can search and replace, but you'll have to search and replace every single value or create some sort of automated script for that. I recommend leaving root font size at 16 pixels to make your project more future proof and improve the compatibility with third party packages. Now let's talk about M's. So to be honest, M's are a little weird. They are similar to RIMs, but instead of referencing the root font size, the font size of the HTML element, they reference the font size of the parent if we are setting the font size of the element. So I know that's a mouth. Let's actually take a look at the example. So I'll create an element here with a class intro, and I'll just copy the paragraph inside and remove the class like so. So we have another element with the class intro with the paragraph inside. Now, let me add the font size to the intro div. Now, because intro is a child of a body and the body is a child of HTML, the font size will be, if I set it to two M's, for example, it will also be 32 pixels because like I said before, M's inherit the font size of the parent. So in our case, intro inherits the font size of the body and a body inherits the font size of the HTML. So here we have 16 multiplied by two would be two M. But what do you think will happen if I copy this style? Let me just comment it out for a second so it's not applied and add paragraph here. So basically we're saying paragraph that's inside intro div and we set it to the same value. That's right. The font size of the paragraph will now be 64 because, because like I said previously, M's inherit the font size of the parent. So intro has the font size of 32 and the paragraph inside intro has 32 multiplied by two, which is 64. I also say that M's are a little weird because we have this understanding, right? That we are referencing the font size of the parent. So let's say we want to add a border around this paragraph here. We have this like idea that we're referencing the font size of the parent. So let's say I want to make this border to be eight pixels. Now we need to calculate the value, so I divide by 8 by 32 and I get 0 0.25 so I go in here and say border 0 0.25 solid black 0 0.25 m actually and there is already something's off I can see that this is there's no way this is 8 pixels and let's double check that I'll save this I'll go to the browser I refresh the page here and let's inspect this and I can see that the 
width of the border is actually 16 pixels. Let me zoom in here. 16 pixels. And why is that? And that's actually not a bug. It's a feature of M units. When we are setting the font size, we are referencing the font size of the parent. But if we're setting other values with M, we are referencing the font size of the element itself. So in our case, we are referencing the font size of the paragraph. And because the font size of the paragraph is 64, 0 0.25 multiplied by 64 would be 16. So that's the width of the border. And because of the fact that M's reference the font size of the parent when setting the font size, because of this behavior, they're not super popular. And when Rams got introduced, developer community got super excited because Rams are way more straightforward, easier to understand and way more maintainable. I don't really use M's very often. Sometimes I would use them for properties like letter spacing or maybe setting underline thickness when the math makes sense. But I cannot think of a use case where M's would be the only way to do something if the entire project relies on RAM units. If you know such use case, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd really love to know. And that's pixels versus RAMs versus M's. I hope this video helps you understand how these units work so you can make informed decisions on when to use which unit in your project instead of just memorizing that I'll use pixels for this, RAMs for this, and uh, M's for something else. I plan on doing more videos about CSS units, so if that's something that you're interested in, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.